Hello, I'm Captain Hightower. I go by Pogo. I'm a instructor pilot on the B-52 at Barksdale Air Force Base. And I'm Captain Miller De Leon. I go by Remix, and I'm a B-52 instructor pilot at Barksdale Air Force Base. So we're going to talk through the engine starting procedures for the B-52. Now, normally we would have external power and external air uh, connected. Uh, this aircraft doesn't have an APU, an auxiliary power unit, so we require an uh, external air source to get enough bleed air to start the engines. So after we would get up to that point in the checklist where we'd start engines, we'd contact our crew chief on the ground to coordinate that the aircraft's clear and that we're uh, ready to start engines and he has fire coverage as well. Uh, and then essentially we would uh, make sure our brakes are set here we turn off our air to make sure we have uh, maximum air pressure going to the engines for starting procedures. Then we'd conduct our clearing procedure. So I'll say, stand by to start uh, number four. And the crew chief will say something like, fire guard posted and clear. I'll say clear left. I'd say clear right. And then I'd say start four. Our starter switches are actually over here on the co-pilot side. And at that point, I would actuate the starter. And then uh, we begin monitoring the engine at that point to make sure that it's actually responding to our starter being on and the air is getting the appropriate amount of air to it. So each of the eight engines has its own stack for engine starting or for engine monitoring here. So we'd be looking for the RPM to start winding up as the external air spinning that engine. At 15% RPM, I provide uh, fuel to the engine by bringing it up to the idle position. So I'd say something like fuel to four and then ground would confirm that we have a good start on four. Uh, after that point, we would uh, wait two minutes to warm up for that engine, and then I'll say, ground, clear me to push up four and start five. He would say something like, clear to start five, and I would say, clear left. I would say, clear right. Start five. While holding the throttle to make sure that we're not uh, increasing the amount of fuel flow, or airflow rather, until I have the starter in the starter position, I'd start the starter, and then release. So then I'll push this uh, throttle up to about 90% to provide uh, bleed air from that number four engine and then watch the number five engine stack to watch the RPM wind up. Once we hit 15% on that engine, I'll say fuel to five and I'll, I'll put the number five throttle to the idle position there. Um, as these get to about 35 to 45 RPM, I'm giving him a hand signal because it's pretty loud at this point to turn off the starters for uh, the respective engines as they start. So I would say something like five and he would go off or continuous on the number five uh, starter switch there. Uh, once number five started, I'll pull this back to idle. Again, we'll wait two more minutes to warm up, and then we'll uh, do one last clearing check before we start the remaining uh, throttles using the bleed air, uh, or remaining engines using the bleed air from four and five. So I'll say, ground clear me to start the remaining engines. He'll say clear, clear left. Clear right. Start the remaining engines. I turn on the starters for the remaining six engines. And then I'll advance number four to about 90%, and number five to about 85% to provide that bleed air for the remaining engines. And then uh, Remix will take these three engines on the left, I'll take the three or three on the right, and I'll take the three on the left. And then as they get to their 15% RPM, sometimes uh, in different orders, we'll advance them and provide fuel to start those engines and light them up. Uh, then our responsibility for the next couple seconds is to kind of monitor the engine stack, the oil pressure, make sure those remaining engines are starting appropriately, watching the exhaust gas temperature gauges to make sure the engines aren't uh, too hot or anything like that. And then listening to ground report any abnormalities for the engine starting process, uh, if we have an engine that's torching or uh, smoking excessively or something like that. Uh, once that's complete, we'll bring these throttles back to uh, four and five after I've given him the hand signals for the different engines reaching their target RPM to turn the starters off. Um, and at that point, we'll have all engines started.